Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. So welcome to the podcast, everybody. Today we're talking to Lee, who is possibly the longest PPL uh, journey we've ever come across. I'm sure there's people out there that have taken longer, but... um, So, Lee, uh, you first contacted us in... 2020 wasn't it i think it yeah was yeah it's a, around it's COVID time. three years three years ago it yeah was, it was yeah, yeah. and yeah. after i heard your story which we'll go into uh shortly i you know anybody who knows my story i had a pretty bad journey i thought i did um so when i heard your story i was like i really want to help you it really would mean a lot to be able to get you through this so so firstly welcome to the podcast lee and welcome back to england thank you <laughs> thank you simon oh it's good to be back yeah so lee's <laughs> traveled from singapore and incidentally he traveled from singapore to do his training i not did e- not each day mind you but it was <laughs> <laughs> it's a long commute but a long uh, commute. Yeah. <laughs> um so you finally finished in 2022 after 35 years of trying various countries and schools, <laughs> can, can you remember what it actually felt like when you realised you'd passed? It was, um, it, it was, it was uh, not as much of an excitement as I was expecting. It was more of a, of a relief. Um, it, was, it was sort of a, 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 have I really, you know, and there was sort of a, almost a disbelief. Mm. You know, it was like, have I actually really, you know, done this? Um, and it wasn't until... About two or three weeks later, when I had got my license, because you, you can't, you know, you don't get it immediately. Yeah. You've got to wait a couple of weeks. And, yeah. then, and then I went on my, you know, my first flight as my first PIC, a pilot in command, you know, on my own. Mm. Then that's when you first, that, I think that's yeah. when you actually, like, pass in the, the test and, and that. That's, you got a bit of shell shock, you know, yeah. and a bit of, oh, wow, disbelief and a wow. And, but what, it's not actually when you go and do your first flight on your own, that's yeah. when you kind of realize, oh, wow, I did actually pass. <laughs> I, um, to be honest, I found it an anti climax because, yeah. uh, you know, I'd been trying for, mine was 12 years in total, <laughs> um, but I'd been trying for so long. When it happened, I thought, well, what do I do now? <laughs> right. Yeah, there was a bit, yeah, there was a bit of that, but it was yeah. just like, yeah. <laughs> but no, we were really excited for you because it was out of all the learn to fly journeys I've, I've helped people with. That I get the most satisfaction out of helping people that have had the hardest journeys. Yeah, and and for you to see you pass, it was <laughs> you know, I know we had some troubles in COVID and all that kind of stuff, but for me, it was like I don't care how we do it, we need to get you through this, you know. Um, so can you take us um, back to the beginning then? So what was a year you decided to to start flying and why? Well, I. I, f- I mean, like a lot of people in the UK and actually in even in other countries, I mean, I first got my first flight experience in the Air Cadets, mm-hmm. you know, when I was a teenager. And um, I even managed to get uh, my first solo because uh, in the Air Cadets, if, if you're okay enough, mm-hmm. they have like a gliding, power gliding, and even PPL scholarships that you can do. I wasn't mm-hmm. good enough to get a PPL scholarship, but I managed to get the powered gliding um, mm-hmm. sort of thing over near to where I was living. And um, so I actually, you know, did, I actually ended up going solo in about five and a half hours, which was really quick. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah they yeah. even said, wow, you're really, you know, that was really, I'd done really well. Hmm. And um, that was in 1987. Wow. So I was a very, you know, yeah. <laughs> quite young. I was seven. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. I was, uh, the, what was I, um, 19. Yeah, I was 19. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was kind of near the end of my Air Cadets uh, stay. But um, but I was, at, and I, I, I went solo and, and I was like, this is great I was mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get my PPL and I'm gonna do all this and whatever yeah. and and then real life kind of like you know slaps you in the face and at 19 you, you know you're starting getting a, you're out of school and you get yeah. a job and then you get a house and then you get a car and then you get this and you know and, and, yeah. and but I still wanted to do that that was more than anything I really wanted to and I even looked into various because um, I, I remember back in the early 90s British Airways was doing a scholarship hmm where you could get on a scholarship and um, I did even apply into it but then I cancelled that when I realised that yeah they give you a scholarship for getting your pilot's licence and going in as an airline pilot which was definitely a thought yeah. um, but they don't give you anything else so you have no living expenses no food no. Right. and uh, I was at that point I'd already you know, moved out I was on my own and I'm going well I can't do that how can I I can't yeah, okay, eat I can't, <laughs> where do I live I mean, yeah. so it was sort of like okay that solved one problem but created another one and then yeah. you know um, 
so I, I still wanted to. And then I, you know, I'd go flying with friends every so often. When any any time anybody was going in a plane, I would jump in and, and go yeah. with them. Or any opportunity I had. And um, I ended up moving to the States in the 90s. And um, I thought that might be an easier way for me to... Because I always heard, oh, it's cheaper over there. And yeah. like, eh, it's not, not so much cheaper, but, it, you know. Um, and again, I was sort of, you know, life got in the way and, and things like that. And um, But the one thing that I started to do at that point was to... I, I, I'd heard, I'd, you know, I'd heard other people telling me their stories about getting mm-hmm. a PPL and their problems. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to make their mistakes. Yeah. Um, which I did yeah, <laughs> in yeah. the end. Yeah. But, um, but the big one that a lot of people were saying was, make sure that you've got the time and the money sort of allocated, or at least like a good chunk of it, so mm-hmm. that you don't start and then have to pause and then restart yeah. and then have to pause. And so I kind of bear that in mind. And, you know, during the 90s, I didn't have any money. I had time, didn't have, you know... Then when I, you know, I'd have money and didn't have time, and it would go back mm. and forward between which one. I didn't have both. <laughs> so you were kind of training with those barriers at the time. I was sort of giving myself limitations, yeah. which I should, probably shouldn't have been. Yeah. I, I should have. I should have at least tried to be a bit more active in in getting forward. I, I'd sort of imposed a self limitation on myself, okay. and um, I probably shouldn't have. Um, cause that kind of helped me back. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell us about some of the PPL training you did in other schools and other countries? Yeah. Things, so what it? happened was, is a long, you know, a cut, cut to, um, actually about six years ago. Okay. And I was, I'd, I'd now, was now living in Singapore mm-hmm. and, um, I, I, you know, like, again, like a lot of kids of my age, I remember uh, the James Bond film, you know, mm. you only live twice, you know, mm. where James Bond flies an auto gyro. Mm. And I was, I, I thought, oh, that's the coolest thing ever, you know, because this thing arrives in a suitcase and he puts it together and he flies <laughs> off. And I, I do remember seeing Ken Wallace, who was the guy who actually built those, flying at an air show in the 80s. I, I definitely like remember that, you know. So um, somehow I was looking online because i would always like you know look online at various websites and think about this and think about you know Mm. and i stumbled across a guy in thailand who Mm. did auto gyro pilot um uh, not training but like joyrides okay he 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 had a place outside of bangkok and he would take tourists up yeah and i went i've always wanted to try an auto gyro because those are cool looking yeah and i'd never been in one you know um, I'd flown in, you know, helicopters and I'd flown in planes and gliders, you know, but again, just more with friends whenever mm. I had an opportunity. But now, and I thought, okay, this is great. So I contacted him and I said, what do you do? And he goes, and he told me. And um, he said, you know, I, I can't, I can't give you a, a, a do a license here because I'm not mm. licensed to do licensing in, mm-hmm. in Thailand. Um, turns out he was an American guy um, mm. who used to be a, a Huey pilot. Okay. And then he had a business in Asia. He'd stayed in Asia for, for decades. Um, doing various things and he essentially retired now mm. um, um but was full of life you mm. know anyway so i ended up booking like a five hour kind of block with him and i went over to thailand and um did like a long weekend you know i was like mm. okay i do five and um and i met this like 75 year old guy you know who's retired and flying this and it, and the thing that actually got me sort of back into definitely wanting to get my PPL was that so there was this uh, 75 year old guy you know who's in Thailand giving these joy rides to tourists and also doing a little bit of training on the side yeah and um it, it I noticed that there was this very much a, a life in him yeah and that flying gave him and I was yeah. like hey you know um I, I want to be that guy in in uh, 30 years or whatever it is you know yeah um and um, so that, you know, so we did, we, I did these five hours in the, this auto gyro on the weekend and it really kind of reinvigorated me because it was a combination of finally being able to actually do some, some flying on my own. Mm. Um, I couldn't go solo uh, or anything and I wasn't ready to go solo then after five hours, but, yeah. um, but I was getting pretty close. He was like, well, in a few more hours, you could probably go solo, but yeah. um, but that would then require licensing and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, so I spoke to him about all this and I went, you know what? This was, so this was about six years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I was uh, 49 at the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, my 50th birthday is coming up next mm-hmm. year. Why don't I, I get my PPL for my 50th birthday? Mm-hmm. And um, so that kind of became like, okay, this is my target. So then I started looking at what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? And I'm living in Singapore. Now, Singapore um, is, is a pretty expensive country and it's a very tiny country which means mm. it literally has one airfield one yeah. J, you know and, and it has two very tiny flight schools that mm-hmm. have like one plane each yeah. 
Um, so I contacted them and they were sort of like, oh yeah, well, it's going to cost you this much money. And I'm talking, it was like 50,000 pounds. Wow. And it'll take you two years and this and that. And I went, it can't, that doesn't yeah. sound right. It can't, this doesn't, you know. Um, the thing was, is that people just do it very casually there if mm. they do it. Um, so I contacted, you know, I spoke to them and, and it turned out that, yeah, most people in Singapore, they either go to Australia or they go to the States yeah. to do their flight training and then they come back and then they convert it. So I was kind of like, well, I was working at the time, so I couldn't take off to go to Australia or the US. Yeah. Um, so then I spoke to the, the guy I went to in Thailand and, we we he'd actually got a small two seater plane as well. He'd got the auto gyro, but he got a, two, a small two seater plane. So mm-hmm. I I was like, well, I can do some training with you, and I can I'll see how that goes. So I mm-hmm. did that, and um, so then I I set myself a goal, you know, for my fiftieth birthday, and then I looked around, and um, I I kind of got sold on a place in Florida that, that promised me a two-week accelerated PPL. Two weeks, wow. Two weeks, yes. They wow. were like, yes. And uh, yes, they, they sell you on a two-week PPL, yeah. but it's not realistic at all. No. And no. Um, so what I did was I, I made sure that um, I actually had about 20, 25 hours in a two-seater plane in, mm-hmm. in Thailand before yeah. I went. I'd done all the ground school, the mm-hmm. videos. I'd done my medical because you can actually do your medical in the US, in, in Singapore. Yes. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was like ready to go. I, mm-hmm. I, I thought I'd done everything I could before. I mean, I'd spent basically six months beforehand mm-hmm. getting ready, and uh, flew over there. You know, it's a twenty-four hour flight to get to to, to Florida from Singapore, oh, and um, and then I found and this was a very large. Fl- I'm not going to mention them but yeah, yeah. Uh, i've given them a very bad review on google so let's put it that way um <laughs> there's a very large flight school in florida mm. um and they were completely disorganized mm. like literally when i arrived they were like oh we, what, which course are you doing are you doing this one are you doing that one and i'm like wait a minute you, you should be all ready to go. we're doing this in two weeks i'm like the clock is ticking yeah yeah how are we yeah. going to do this in two weeks and yeah. um so they'd sold me on this two-week course, and um, one of the things they'd told me on was that you'd have one instructor would only have two in students. So you'd literally have an instructor 50% of the day. Yeah. You could go flying you know, two, three hours a day. Mm-hmm. You'd have a, an hour or two of ground school. and you'd do, Well, my, once I got there, my instructor had six students, right. and I was barely getting one hour flying a day. Yeah. And I was just like, this is not working. So by the end of the first week, I went to them and I said, you need to tell me what's happening here, what's going on, because you're selling me on this, and I've flown all this way over here. Yeah. yeah. And um, basically, they kind of went, oh, yeah, yeah, you're not going to be done in two weeks. You're not ready. And I'm like, well, yeah, because... Because mm, you haven't committed to... Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I came over here. I had, I had no other commitments. I yeah. said, look, I completely cleared everything, so, and I was ready to go. When I got here, so basically I kind of pulled the plug on that, and I came yeah. back, and that kind of deflated me a bit. I can imagine about, yeah. for about six months. Yeah, you know, I, I came imagine. back, and I was just like, "Ah, oh, this is not going to work." So, um, so then I, uh, I thought, well, maybe I can do something local mm-hmm. in Singapore. So I contacted those schools again, and they still gave me these really silly numbers and these really silly timelines, and I was like, "No, I can't take that long." Um, and then um, I contacted a school in in uh, Malaysia, which is okay. not far from you know across, and. Yeah. Um, that all went really good, except um, it was a kind of a, a strange quirk. And again, I, I, I don't want to drag this out as being this is a very long process, and I could write a book on it. But um, <laughs> it, um, uh, I had to get a student visa to be able to yes. you know, be, a, be, a, be a student pilot in Malaysia. And um, the problem was I was actually working for a company, although I was living in Singapore, I was actually working in Malaysia at that time. Mm-hmm. I, I work in film and television, and we were yeah. working on a project there. And the weird thing was that um, I couldn't get my student pilot license because I had a work visa, right. because I needed a student, student visa. visa yeah. And because I wasn't, a, and if I'd got a student visa, it would have cancelled my work visa. Right. It was this weird, you oh, know, I'm like, God. come on, this is silly, you yeah. know. So I had to, so that then delayed me another six months or whatever. And I'm like, okay. So I went up to, I actually went up to Thailand again and did a bit of flying with the other guy just to, because I'm, I'm, I'm backing, I'm back in my, you know, yeah. getting, getting going again, you know. So, um, so eventually I finished that work project. I went back to the school. I said, you know, and again, a lot of the schools over there are very small. 
Yes, very, very yeah. small. Um, they literally had, and this wasn't actually technically a school, it was a club right, that okay. had a couple of planes and it had one instructor who yeah. was one of their you yeah, know, team. Yeah. Um, most of the places in the rest of the world, they're only the schools are only focused on doing a full um, com- CPL or an ATPL. They're doing yeah. a full commercial. You know, they're basically taking kids in for two years and then they, yeah. they go into the airlines. That's what they're for. I, I, I'm too old and I didn't have the resources to do that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so anyway, I went back to them, and uh, their one instructor had now got a job at the airlines. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and, and so they were like, we've lost our only instructor. And I'm like, oh, geez, that's not yeah. lining up for me, you know. Yeah. So, um, so then I looked again um, back at Thailand. Yeah. Uh, went back at Thailand, and um, a friend of mine, um, he put me in touch with, because to be honest, the, you know, again, a lot of the schools in other countries are not quite as good as they should be, you know, yeah. so you've got to be checking a lot. And especially yeah. in places, some places, you know, you can kind of, you know, slip, slip, slip some money in an envelope to your instructor and you pass. Uh, and I was like, I don't want any of that. I yeah. don't want to you pass I, I, on your own merits. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want that. You yeah. know, I want to actually be confident that I can fly. So yeah. I checked around, I found another school and I found a really good school just outside Bangkok. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, this is going to work out. And uh, this was the beginning of 2020. Okay. And we all know what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Was, well, was that 2020 or 2019? I've lost track. No, it was 2020. Yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. I've lost track of where yeah, we are yeah, these yeah. years. I don't know. Yeah. What, what year are we in now? Yeah, so it was 2020, beginning of 2020. Yeah. It was all, you know, didn't know anything was going to happen. Yeah. Um, I'd actually, so I went up to Bangkok, visited this place, um, got it all signed up. And then this was right when things you're like yeah. mm, there's something happening there's something mm. this is we were getting word that there was this potential problem yeah and um but i'm like no 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 i'm i'm determined again i'm i'm like i'm ready to go again i'm yeah. invigorated um and um i uh got back to to singapore and got everything sorted out got my visa sorted out you know i had my, i literally and i had my bags packed i had yeah. a plane ticket booked i had my bags packed and the day before I flew out to Bangkok, um, they shut the borders. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, yeah, you know, oh, it's another thing to get in the way. You yeah. know, I'm like, okay, ne- what's next? <laughs> At this point, had you not considered giving up? <laughs> oh, many times. There, there's definitely, you know, but, um, but after, the, you know, this many years and this many problems, yeah. I mean... Um, yeah, and then that is definitely, I, I can see that being a common problem with everybody. Is, yeah, absolutely. Is, is, you yeah. know, oh, there's a problem, I'm going to give up. You yeah, know, but, well, I, I did it three times. Yeah. It's, it's easy, easy to yeah. do. It, it is, easy it is do. easy. So, um, no, the, you know, the, there's definitely been more, more, and there's been more times since then that I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to give up, I can't, you know, this is just not... But um, it is it is it is something you definitely got to persist with, and you yeah. got to push through. I mean, um, e- even once I you know got here and, and I was doing the written tests, yeah, there was times I was about to give up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I get that. So um, yeah, so then uh, then COVID you know came along, and we were like, well, how long is this going to last? Maybe it'll be three months. Maybe mm-hmm. it'll be six months. You know, and um, and after about the six months. Um, I was starting to get a bit antsy again because again everywhere was sort of shut. Thailand was still shut down. A lot of places yeah. were now locked down, um, and we had that first first COVID wave yes. kind of went through. And I thought, okay, maybe that will be that will be it. So mm-hmm. it was now sort of in the summer of 2020, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, okay, I'm I'm, right, I'm ready to go again because mm-hmm. you know, I was like you know sort of six months of stewing, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> And um, so I started looking, and um, I, I have dual U.S. and U.K. citizenship. So yeah. I was like, okay, I can definitely go to the U.S. or I can go to the U.K. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, COVID was definitely a worry, mm. um, but it seemed like we were over that first that first yeah. big hump had, had passed, and it seemed like maybe things had calmed down. So um, mm-hmm. so I was looking, and um, I thought, well, uh, I'll, I, you know. Um, I'll come here instead of going to the U.S. Because the U.S., you know, I don't want to get into politics, but mm. the, the the person over there wasn't taking it seriously. Yes. Um, and so I was like, nah, I don't think I want to go there because there was too many mm. people who were just not taking it seriously yeah, at all. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know? And so I thought, well, you know, and um, 
you know, despite what people say, I had good faith in the NHS, and I thought, well, if I do catch it when I'm here, I've, I've, I've got some. You're faith in a good in the place. NHS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then, and then I'm like, okay, now I've got to find a good flight school because again, I've had I'd had problems with flight schools. Yeah. The one in the US had, had messed me around. You know, the one in Malaysia only had one instructor, and it, you yeah. know, the one in Thailand they weren't. They didn't mess me around. That was COVID that got in their way. So I've got mm-hmm. nothing against them. Um, so then um, I contact, you know, and, and through this, actually, I've got, I've got a friend, you know, some friends in the UK who got yeah. the license. And so I contacted them and said, um, I think it was, it was Carol. Like, it was Carol. Concert. Yeah, my yeah. friend Carol. So yeah. I said to her, I was like, all right, I'm probably going to come over there. Yeah. What schools do you know of or what do you over? And um, she was like, well, I don't actually know what schools are around, but mm-hmm. let me have a look. Let me have a last. And actually, one of the things that she did was she looked on, I think it was on Flight Radar or whatever, and she said, yeah. oh, well, I'm gonna, I want to look at where the busy areas are for yeah. flight schools are, you know. Yeah. And so she looked around and she said, well, Oxford's really busy and um, Coventry's really busy mm-hmm. and, uh, and Cranfield's really busy. And, you know, so and that's in the area where I wanted to sort of be. So I said, OK, well, let's have a look at what flight schools are there. And so, you know, we did a bit of look around. We came up with some flight schools. And then mm-hmm. um, I, I, I actually sent her over here to check you out. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> remember? Yeah, 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 I remember. We had a video call. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so I sent her over here. I said, go, go check them out. See what they're like. And so yeah. she came over and she, uh, she kind of, you know. And I, it was, I think if I remember rightly, you didn't realize that she was a pilot. But she's um, got like a thousand hours. I didn't in the first instance the first until part way through our conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I got, uh, kind of sent her in as a bit, you know, she's quite good at playing the, the sleuth, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, it was, but I kind of did that on purpose. In that yeah, I wanted absolutely. Her, I wanted her to kind of almost be like a, a pretend yeah. pilot and, and yeah. she, you know, see what was, you know. And she was like, okay, this is, the, she gave, you know, so she yeah. gave you the thumbs up. Uh, and, thanks, girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then, you know, then we started talking. Yeah. And I explained my situation or whatever. And you, ex- you know, you, you explain what was you know, what your plans were yeah. for both for what the school does and how you yeah. do your courses and what you thought you could do for me. Yeah. And I was really impressed with that. Yeah. And um, and that's how we you know that's how we ended up at Elmat. So yeah, uh, and I think yeah. um, it's like I said, I was really hoping that you'd come here because I really wanted to help you. I really did. It, it meant a lot to me to <laughs> to get you through after all that time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that was still that was still you know a, a few years ago. But, it was. Uh, we'll get it to the was. next. We'll get to the next step. <laughs> yeah. So, so we got here eventually, and then COVID wasn't over. <laughs> COVID wasn't over. So yeah, I came over. Um, I think it was August September. Yeah. Um, uh, it was after that first wave, and it was all good, and um, everything went really good at first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there was did, a few yeah. hiccups at first, mostly yeah. on my side, but. Um, but no, I mean the, the the training went well. The instructors were good. Mm-hmm. Um, everything you know, I liked the aircraft and the area, and I thought mm-hmm. things were going really good. And um, yeah, we we actually got up to. I got my solo done again. Yeah. You know, um, pr- fairly fairly quickly, which was a great. Because I was like, wow, it's been like thirty two years since I went yeah, solo. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that. Yeah. And the thing actually, the funny thing is actually that, that getting my that solo again was yeah. almost more invigorating than actually doing the, the yeah. final test in yeah, a way yeah. because yeah. again, it's that first moment when you're on your own. And you that's like when you then you feel like a pilot yeah, yeah. you know and as i say with the test i still had the instructor with me it wasn't until after i got my license and did my first flight on my own yeah that i kind of felt like oh i've actually passed so yeah the, that so going solo is a definitely a major i think it's a big tipping point it is you know I, sorry the um there's a time, if you like, where I know that students are most likely to give up and it's always halfway through the circuits. Right. Always. And the reason being is that they've they've got so overwhelmed with the fact that they think they can't land an aeroplane. And what they don't realise is when they can, it'll just click yep. and they'll forget why they couldn't do it. Yep. So it's like the impossible barrier. When yep. they smash through that, everything yep. else seems to go a bit easier. Yeah. You no, know? and I, I, I definitely had several... There was definitely several stages where you're, you're, you're doing circuit after circuit after circuit and you're doing yeah. not a good landing an okay landing not a good landing okay yeah. land, not a good land you know and you're yeah. going why can't i get this yeah. you know and then as you say there's certainly a point where you, your brain yeah. you suddenly start to um, i think it's just a perception of what's going on around you it it's, is and and you know it, there's a lot going on when you're flying you, you've, you've got a lot to to think about you've got yeah. a lot to remember and um you know 
in, in some ways, people compare it to, oh, we're well, learning to drive a car. And I said, well, it is, but it isn't. I mean, yeah. there's definitely obviously similarities, but um, but obviously it's then multiplied by probably 10. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, well, over, it's, over. It's, you know, for a start, you've You're got going a three-dimensional, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you don't have a road to, you know, you can't have a road to stick to, but you don't have a road to stick to. you can't to, pull so. over. <laughs> exactly. And you can't kind of, oh, I don't feel good here. I'll just have a break. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, getting back to... To having a solo, that yeah. was that was a definite invigoration. And then I got to the cross country solo, mm-hmm. which is you know. So then you're not just in the circuit; you've actually yeah. gone off away from the airfield and navigated and yeah. come back on your own. Yeah, that's and then that's actually when you kind of really go, "Wow, I'm I actually feel Can you, like I'm, you probably remember this like I do." Is that when you visit airfields as a you know wannabe starting up student, and you see these people. You know, you go to an airfield cafe and somebody rolls in by themselves at a high vis on and they walk out by and you think, he's a pilot, you know. <laughs> and then when you do your first qualifying, you know, not your qualifier, but your first landaways by yourself, you're yeah. that person and you think, I wonder if anybody's, you know, I'm a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, but it's that realisation, isn't it? It is. Did it, it's definitely, you know? it's, it's definitely uh, that realise. you know. Um, so, yeah, no, co- you know, I'm... I, First of all, the, the the first you know people say, well, what would you tell people to do to, to get a PPL quicker? Is mm. don't try and do it during a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> do, do you think the, in, the intensive training was definitely beneficial? Absolutely, yeah. No, you've you've got to commit to a, a definite schedule, mm. um, and and you know um, I'll let you you know you can kind of tell people what you know is a better schedule you know, based on your experience because obviously you've got a lot yeah. more appearance you know people than you are. Um, but for me, it's sort of like, um, yeah, you, you definitely want to try and commit um, to, if you can, you know, every week, every yeah. weekend, you know. Yeah, and obviously you're busier on weekends. But, yeah, the other thing I found very, you know, obviously I was here kind of full time and was more dictated by the, the weather, actually, mm. was was a bit of a, a factor. But 40% uh, cancellation rate because of weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so. Pe- people always say to me, oddly enough, is when when's a good time to learn to fly? Shall I start in May? And I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter to me because you're going to see bad weather wherever you go, yeah. whatever time of year. So it depends on what part of the course do you want to see that bad weather. I'd, I'd say it's better to see it earlier on than later on when you need to go solo. Yeah. So yeah. The, 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 the right time to start to learn to fly is always when you have the time and the money and forget everything else. Yeah, you yeah, know? definitely. Because so. even, I mean, to be honest, some of my, my smoothest flying was done in December. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, yeah, it was chilly. Yeah. Um, but the air is actually quite clear. Nice. You don't have this... Uh, the fog and the mist so yeah. much um, that the Stable, haze because it's cold and it's cold <laughs> yeah. it's exactly you know you yeah. don't have the thermals bouncing yeah. you around so yeah no no I mean so yeah we, we I got up until I'd done my solo navigations and I was just about to do my solo landaways mm. um, and that's when we had another obviously you say COVID hadn't yeah. hadn't uh, finished and uh, we had our second wave yeah. and that caused uh, another lockdown yeah um, and uh yeah, I should have, uh, you know. So I and I was stubborn at that point. So I was like, okay, there's only a month lockdown. I'll wait. Yeah. And uh, and then we came out of that lockdown, but it was a it wasn't a complete come out. It was still a limited. Yeah, we uh, had a lot of restrictions. A lot of restrictions. Yeah. yeah. So and I mean, so. one thing that was I felt was really good about the situation was that everybody that was involved in it, you know, ourselves and the customers at the time, we all just sat down with the individual and said, look, this is what's going on. This is the limitations what can we do about it and we all kind of worked together made a plan um and got through it there wasn't a single person during that period who didn't end up finishing right you know i mean granted they took a lot longer than people who started outside of that period um but everybody stuck with it and did it in the end yeah it was great yeah it was good yeah no definitely because you know you kind of had this outside restriction that wasn't your fault or anybody mm. else's fault and you're like okay well i'm gonna push through that one for sure because that's not something that yeah. i have control over and if anyone had said that there was going to be some kind of illness that you could get that's going to close the world down pretty much yes yeah. uh, yeah you just think oh, whatever yeah know? yeah well <laughs> it's hopefully happening that, now <laughs> yeah and you know and the reality is the last one was about 100 years ago so yeah, hopefully yeah. it's going to be another 100 years before yeah. the next one and uh, we won't have to worry about it but. so i think one of the big points about learning to fly is not just the process but it is your relationship with the school definitely yeah no so that was one of the big things 
you know factors for me because yeah. you know I mean I know when I you know when we we kind of got into that second lockdown and there was limitations I did still do some flying because yeah. I'm like I want to fly I want to yeah. I'm going to wait till the it lifts and I'll, I want to fly and of course yeah. it, it actually ended up that that lockdown sort of the it wasn't the lockdown but the restrictions went on for about six months almost I yeah. think you know that was quite a long period where there was just limitations on what you could do oh no your cameras um, cameras died. Never mind. We got audio. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, I ended up um, you know I was like okay, well, I'm just gonna I have to go back to Singapore. I you know yeah. Um, I didn't really have any option, and my wife was sort of like, um, "When are you coming home?" Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah, she yeah. couldn't come over here. Yeah, and. Uh, and uh, I do know that, um, you know, I could, I could tell that maybe you guys were thinking, oh, we're never going to see him again because, you know, he's, he's well, heading I, off to the end. But I could understand yeah, the reality of that. Yeah. I definitely would. I mean, know. I'm not going to lie and say it didn't cross our mind. Yeah. It, was, it was a possibility. Yeah, but no. who could blame you exactly. if you didn't? Yeah, you know, yeah, it was, yeah. um, and, and, and a lot of people could have easily given up at that point. Go you know on, what? You know, there's, there's one thing I will say, Lee, is that what you did was, you know, it was a testament to you, but it was... <laughs> It's probably one of the most incredible journeys I've ever seen. <laughs> it really was because, honestly, I see people give up before first solo and things all the time. You know, I did it. You've done it in the past as well. Um, you know, to, to have all of those barriers after all of those years and finally get it done. Yeah. You know, that it's that's for your work, you know. Yeah, so. it was, uh, as I say, it was, uh, there was definitely, you know, plenty of times I was about to give up. And, and, yeah. and even, even getting closer to the end, yeah. there was definitely times. So... I know we had some motivational talks at some points, but yeah, it was... <laughs> yeah, no, there's, uh, you know, um, and, and, you know, I had a lot of frustrations and yeah. self-frustrations and, um, you know, but you do have that, but you've got to, yeah. you know, you've got to, you've got to work through those and roll, push through it. Roll with the punches and get on, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what did you find um, most difficult during the training? <laughs> Okay, the most, okay, this is actually, so I've already had people ask me, you know, like, what, it, what I want to do my PPL, what should I do, what should yeah. I do? And um, actually, the, the most, the hardest thing I found was, was the, the books, mm -hmm. the theory, the reading, the tests. It wasn't so much the tests, but there's, you know, when you, when you get those nine books, it's a big, mm -hmm. it's a big pile of paper. Oh, God, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of... Um, so the main thing I would say to anybody, and the, the thing is now, and, and I've, I've already said this actually to a couple mm -hmm. of people, is get the books and start reading them. Straight start on. getting that information. Because it takes a long while for all that information to get into your head. Yes. You could, and the thing is, you can read those books yeah. and you've, you've only taken in about 20% of it. Yeah. And then you've got to read them again and you've taken yeah. in another 20%. And it's a big pile of books and there's an awful lot of information that you do. And there is a point where you're going, I can't remember all this. I'm never yeah. going to learn all this. There's too much here. I can't figure this out. Um, <laughs> but like with anything, again, you... you you know, you do it, you know, you watch, you know, you, you've got, you know, videos, yeah. um, you've got in, instructors that do your classes. Mm -hmm. And, and so the combination of, of, you know, watching videos, talking to other pilots is yeah. also really important. And you're yeah. talking to instructors, asking yeah. questions, being, you know, and there's many times I went to the instructors and I'm like, oh, I know I'm being annoying. I know I'm asking another, you know, but they're fine. There was never yeah, any, well, there was never any, um, you know, what I say to people, the only stupid question is when you didn't ask. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, yes. So, um, um, so the, but the book, you know, all, all the, uh, the, the theory and, and all those books, there's a big pile of books. And, and yeah. So all I would say is start them right away. Yeah, like start them earlier because um, it does help yeah. with the flying lessons as well. You yes, know, and, and the there knowledge. is also, and, and then it's also a, a, a fifty-fifty in the yeah. the stuff you read in the books and you don't understand it. Um, you might have read it, but you don't understand mm. it. And then when you do some flights, you yeah. then clicks and then you read the book again and you're like, oh, okay, now I understand why that does yeah. that. And then, yeah, exactly. and it becomes, it definitely becomes a 50, 50, you know, a symbiotic thing where yeah. the, the, the flying uh, allows the, the, the book, you know, the, the learning in. to sink in and, yeah. and to make sense because there's that whole thing of like, I'm reading this, but I don't understand it. I don't understand how it relates or whatever. And that works its way through. Yeah. 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 So conversely, what would you find the easiest? What did you find the easiest in the training? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anything easy. It's definitely, right. um, you know, no matter what anybody says, it's definitely not an easy, you know. Um, I guess in the, the funny thing is the, 
the actual flying, I think, not not the landing or the radio or the navigation and all this sort of stuff, but, you know, actually flying the plane. I mean, yeah. really, it, it is pretty straightforward, you yeah. know. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and I'd, I'd technically been flying since I was a kid because I mm-hmm. had done flying, you know, when I was younger. And, and even when I was a kid, I was always avid. I loved uh, flight simulators and all mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And um, if, if, you know, in another in another lifetime, I, I actually wanted to go into the RAF, into flight simulation. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I came out of high school, um, um, I wanted to go into the RAF. And literally that year, which was 1986... Um, there, there wasn't any hiring on the RAF, in, and so I, I ended up in a different career completely. <laughs> but, um, but I really did want to go into yeah. flight because I wanted to fly, and I liked um, uh, models and miniatures, yeah. which at that time a lot of flight simulators were still using yeah, yeah. these huge models with a camera that flew yeah, over yeah. them. This is ancient yeah. technology now. But, it, but at that era in the late 80s, it was moving into CG computer generated and computer yeah. flight simulators. Um, yeah. And I did go in a, a, a computer, a, a you know, multi million dollar simulator mm. in the late 80s um, at an airline, at Monarch Airlines at Luton Airport. Mm. I went there, I managed to get into one of their flight simulators. Oh, wow. And I was like, wait, this is computer generated. And I was into computers at that yeah, time. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. This yeah. is great because I can fly, I can work with graphics, I can work with computers, I can. Mm-hmm. and. But as I say, that didn't work out. I went in another <laughs> direction. So, um, yeah. so the yeah, the the actual flying, I, I think, is is sort of. I don't want to say it's the easiest part, but the reality <laughs> is, when you're flying and there's nothing going on, yeah, it it's, is the easy part. It's yeah. then everything else, you know, it's, it's putting everything together, isn't it? Yeah. The, um, yeah, and even taking off is fairly. It's the landing is obviously yeah, the the landing's, <laughs> landing's a key bit. <laughs> it's, it's important. It's yeah. important. You know. um, so, if you had to do it all over again, right? What would you do different? What would you change? <laughs> um, well, apart from starting earlier, younger, because mm-hmm. you, I think your brain is a little bit more uh, adapt mm. at taking in information when you're younger. Mm, yeah. um, I, I think I would. The main thing I would do is to is to is to definitely find a, a good local school, mm-hmm. close, you know, uh, um, within you know, within an easy reach of, of yeah. where I'm living. Uh, don't try to learn um, from another country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, and just make sure that you've got a, a good school with good instructors that you feel yeah. comfortable with. I think over, over and above anything else, that yeah. is, is definitely the most important thing. Because yeah. you want to, um, you know, it, it's a complicated process and you want to feel confident and competent that, that, that the school has got competence. And as I yeah. say, when I went to that school in Florida... Like literally in the first hour, I was like, I don't feel confident here. Mm. Um, and I almost should have just, I, I, I honestly thought about bailing almost at the moment when I got there. Yeah. This was a big school. They had, I don't know, 20 odd aircraft and a yeah. big hangar. And I, I thought, well, these guys should be organized. Yeah. And I got there and immediately was like, the, the, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck kind of went, mm, something's not right here. Mm. And I was right. You know, yeah. it, it cost me a lot of money to find out I was correct, yeah. but I got a bad feeling. Whereas when I came here, um, I didn't get that. I didn't yeah. get that at all. So. It, is, it is a people business. Yeah. You know, it is. And, yeah. and, and I'm not going to lie to you, we've made mistakes. You know, we've lost students before, like every school has. But yeah. I generally hope by the point that happens that we've sat down, had a conversation and said, right, I think I've done everything I can possibly do to make this right. Maybe it's just not a good fit for you. Right. You know, um, and I think that's really important because sometimes you'll have problems, but it's how you deal with those problems yeah. generally that's more important. So. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, and any problems I had um, here, you know, whether it was learning something or understanding something or whatever, there never seemed to be a problem in, in figuring it out and explaining it to me or, yeah. you know, kind of telling me, you know, <laughs> go read this and you'll figure it out. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, it's, um, so, yeah, and I guess the, the biggest thing really from what we spoke about earlier is making sure you've got the time and the money, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, time and money is, is always like anything in life. Time and yeah. money is, is, is the factor. Um, but... Um, but definitely, you know, time, time, you know, spend your time correctly, as it mm. were. Um, and as I say, don't try and do it during a pandemic. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. but time, you know, you need to put the time in. Yeah, you do. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. And it's not just the time when you're in the school. No. Um, and the funny thing is that I, I've, also, I've said this previously because I, I was a teacher for a few years yeah. uh, in Florida. I work in visual effects, computer yeah. graphics. And I taught at a school in Florida. And on average, I'd have 20, 25 students in my class. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, is at least half the students that I had, mm-hmm. like we had four hours a day in class. 
and that was those four hours a day were the only four hours that they were actually doing anything. Yes, you know, as soon as they left the school, they were off doing whatever it yeah, was. Well, yeah. and I'm like, that they're, they're the students who are not going to get anywhere, yeah. and they didn't. They never went anywhere. They never did anything. Whereas the students that were there, you know, every, you know, they were there before I was there. They yeah. were there after I left. Yeah, you know, they were doing stuff on. You know, they they were spending all those extra hours because a lot of a lot of students um, that I had. The only thing they were interested in is, am I going to get a passing grade? Yeah. Like, what do I need to do to pass this class? Or what do yeah. I need to do to pass this particular, you know, segment or whatever it was? Yeah. That was all they did. Yeah. And I'm like, if that's all you're going to do, then you're not going to get, you know, yeah, you're yeah. not going to get anywhere. Um, and the students that put in, you know, you could see almost immediately which students were putting in the extra hours and were putting in the extra effort. And they're the students that I'm still now talking with i'm working yeah. with i'm worked you know uh, they've worked for me i've worked for them they've yeah. won you know i've got students that have won emmy awards you know wow. uh, in in the field yeah, yeah. and they're now very successful you know supervisors and are running yeah. companies even doing effects you know so but they were like the two or three students out of the 20 yeah. 25 that we we see the same you know i can automatically you know if, if i was able to and i wouldn't but i could i could list off a you know a, a list of names of people who put the effort in and people who don't right right and usually you can see that you know and, and it's got better because when we used to have the written exams if you remember the written exams yep, yep. it was so easy to pass them just with the question banks right and you get what we call the bankers right, <laughs> right? Yes. who would yes. come in and they go oh yeah da, 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 bang through the exams bang 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 yes. and he'd sit and have a conversation with them about whatever and, and they'd be like yeah i've never heard of that all right how, how did you pass it oh i only skimp read the book then i was on the banks all the time right so the, the new exams have weeded out on that rubbish basically yes um, yeah. so yeah. so now it's you know like you said if you're going to do it you want to know about it you yeah. want to be good at it not just pass yeah you know yeah but, yeah, um, yeah no i didn't want to just pass you know i mean obviously there's a certain point you know there's a certain part of you that just goes i just want to pass the test and yeah but you, you were questioning well, everything which is good i did i yes yeah. i was a bit annoying at times i know no but, no not uh, at all not at all because, because um, it's but it's that level of detail you know it, you know it's yeah. not annoying at all it's it's we know that you're that into it it's it's interesting to you yeah and i'd rather see that than the people are just like how oh, can you pass me through this exam you know <laughs> um okay so um what's next for you what's your next flying goal right what's my next flying goal um my next flying goal is actually to get some regular flying in okay that's the that's the next goal and um so I'm still currently living in Singapore, but mm -hmm. my, my work is always project-based. Yeah. So I, I sometimes have to go to different countries to do mm -hmm. a project. And then, so, um, yeah, my next, my next goal is actually to get in some, some sort of regular flying. Yeah. Um, since I completed my PPL, I've, I've actually only done a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, and that was more just happenstance and, and life, as it were, than, yeah. than anything else. But, um, but this year, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely committed to sort of getting in a, a good... Many, as many hours as I can get. Oh, that's good. Um, and, and what I want to do is I really want to uh, build up another 50, 100 hours yeah. of just 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 flying, just, just yeah. actually just flying or whatever. Because then what I want to do is to do my instrument. Yeah, um, So instru instrument flying is definitely... And, so, and everybody says, oh, you should do your instrument flying as soon as you can. I go, well, I want to I want to at least get, you some, know, experience get some experience in yeah. um, and then go on to, to instrument. Um, and then, you know... What I would, you know, what I really want to do after that is to kind of um, you know, save up a bit of money and do some multi-engine yeah. um, rating, you know, because it's like, um, how do I say it without it? Um, you know, I'm not going to be a commercial pilot. I'm not going to be a fighter pilot. I'm, I'm too old mm. for that and all the rest. But I, I kind of, I, I, I want to keep advancing. Yeah. Um, as no, long as good. I can, as long as I've got a medical, <coughs> and I can keep going because also. I want to kind of, um, I don't want to just, I don't want to say that, you know, just being a PPL is, is yeah. you know, is, is nothing special, but, and, and just being a PPL is, is definitely a, yeah. a, 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 a high, it was a life goal for me mm -hmm. more than anything else. That is, but then I realized that, oh, now I've got my PPL, I definitely, I want to be a, you know, a, 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 I want to just be a couple of bits above that, yeah. just, just so I can kind of prove to myself that. That you, you can know, do it. That I can do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you know, um, you know, if I, if I, if I, uh, you know, if I could figure out a way to afford it, you know, I'd love to actually do my heli helicopter PPL. You know, my, oh, my PPL. That's a bit of money. <laughs> that's a bit, of, and that's you know, but yeah. it's uh, that one's it gets a bit expensive. But yeah. but then you know, just because it's like um, you know, 
I, I've only had a little bit of flight time mm. in, a, in a helicopter. But oh, you did that with us, didn't I you? I did that with yeah, you guys, yeah. yeah. Um, but you suddenly realize that, wow, this is a whole Boys. different ball game. This yeah. is a whole different, you've got a, you got a whole different skill set. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I, I guess up here, you know, part of this is, is, is about talking about, you know, if you're older, getting a PPL. Mm. Um, the thing for me is, um, you know, I'm, I'm turning. So, uh, I, ironically, today I'm here. I'm 55 today. It's Happy my birthday, birthday today. mate! Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the irony is that I, my original goal for the after the the initial gap of you know 20 odd plus years, uh, my initial goal was to actually get my PPL for my 50th birthday, which was yeah. five years ago. So, yeah. the, the irony is that um, you know, um, it, uh, here I am. I have got my PPL, and I can yeah. go flying today. Hopefully, as long as the weather stays good. Um, but the thing is, is you know, a lot of people go, oh, 55, oh, you're getting ready for retirement and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, you know. No. And one of the things, and as I say, this all kind of comes back to my original instructor in Thailand, you mm. know, who's now nearly nearly 80. Yeah. Um, but he's still flying. He's yeah. still full of life. It's, Absolutely. You know, yeah. and I'm like, no, 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 that's what I want. Yeah. I want this in jail. And the other thing is, is that, yes, it does get harder doing all of the theory and the, the mm. book learning, definitely. It doesn't quite go into your brain as quickly. Mm. But, um, you know, it keeps you, that's what I want, is I want to keep... Keeps you sharp. Keeps you sharp, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't want to... Nothing against people who play golf, but I don't want to go and retire yeah. and play golf and die because it's yeah. like, ah, what's the point of that? So, what no. type of person plays golf? Yeah. <laughs> people who fly planes a lot of times, it seems. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, but, um, but no, but I, I, what, the main thing for me going forward now is that I, want, I, I don't want to just stay with the people. I want to keep yeah. learning, keep learning. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and keep moving forward because it, it's, it, keeps you, it keeps you sharp, as you say. Yeah. It keeps you sharp. It keeps... And you, you've really got to, you know, you've got to keep your brain going. Yeah. And I think that keeps you active. Yeah. Um, you've also got to keep <clears throat> fairly active physically because one mm. of the things that I tell you, the, the, the medical is, is almost, it's not a cloud that hangs over you, but it is. There's times yeah. where I go, oh, yeah, okay, I've put on a couple of pounds. I should take them off because I don't want to fail my medical. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, yeah. and that actually, and that's a good motivation when you're it getting is. older. Is, yeah, is, is. is that you're passing that medical is like, oh, wow, okay, I'm good. Because now you've got to do it every year once you're yeah. over 50. So, um, but again, that's a good thing to keep an eye on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. the medical is is because you know most people don't go to the doctors until they're sick. Yeah. Whereas this is somebody's checking on you every I think year. You can take your health for granted, and that life can give you a kick in the ass sometimes if you do. Yeah, <laughs> and so so I I want to mentally keep stimulated, and I also want to keep physically stimulated because I want to pass that medical, and I want to be able to keep flying. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for sharing your story with us today, Lee. It's been truly inspirational and, uh, and well done. More thank than you. Anything. And thank uh, you. go and enjoy your birthday flight. And um, he's, he's got his wife with him today as well, yep. which um, you can now show her why we kidnapped you off for all this time. Yeah, this will be my, this will <laughs> to, be my uh, <laughs> first flight with my wife. Um, I'm not saying she's excited. She's a bit apprehensive. <laughs> but, um, but actually, and, and sorry, the last thing I wanted to say, actually, I meant to say it earlier, was mm. one of the motivations <clears throat> that I actually have for learning to fly yeah. um, is to take other people flying. Yes, it's good. actually seriously one of my main motivations because, yeah. um, you know, you see the world differently. Yeah. And, um, and I've lear I learned that many, many years ago. And mm. it's not something I've been able to share because I yeah. can tell other people this. Um, but I, I, I really do, you know, if, if I could retire and, and just, you know, take other people flying all my life, I would be really happy doing that. I, because um, I had two scenarios where I felt really, you know, when you, you, you fly, but you kind of get a little bit complacent about um, not the flying because it's dangerous, but but as in like you forget how lucky you are to be able to do it yep and one of my old school friends i hadn't seen her for years and i still talk to her but only on social media and she says oh my little boy would love to to go in an airplane he's never flown ever exactly and i got to take him in in the 172 and just a look on his face exactly and then uh, chris eames was here on the day when they had the jp out and I says, Chris, can we get the little lad in JP? Just sit him in. And he goes, yep, yeah, come here, lad, you know, get him up there. And he, he loved it. And then one of our other friends, um, their son's got cerebral palsy. And 
um, because Steve, our instructor here, he's got cerebral palsy. Yeah. It's quite close to us. And we thought, you know what, we want to help him as well. Yeah. So I took him flying and we put him in the cockpit after his flight and he was sat there beaming. I've still got the photo. Exactly. And exactly. that was that was worth every penny to me. Uh, and and that's, that's what I want to, I, I don't generally want to give that to other people. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would do that. I mean, um, I know there's a thing in the States called the Eagle Program, which okay. I don't know if they have it over here. I'm, I'm sure there's heard of it. And that's basic, it's basically where they take school kids flying. Yeah, yeah. You know, basically PPL pilots volunteer, yeah, yeah. and they, they'll have like half a dozen kids yeah. will come by, and they'll take a, two or three up in a go, and they'll take them around for a bit, and then they'll oh, take two cool. or three more. And I'm like, that's brilliant. Because yeah. I remember, as I say, I, I got into all this because I was in the Air Cadets. Yeah. And, but I got into the air cadets because I was already interested in flying. Yeah. I want to take up some people who may be a bit more apprehensive and, yeah, and yeah. kind of just give them that experience. So yeah, anyway. That's amazing. Thanks ever so much for coming on, Lido. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thank uh, you like very say, much. Go and enjoy that flight. <laughs> I will do. I will do. And we'll see what my wife says when she gets back. Brilliant. Thank uh, you. No worries. Thank you, Lee. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.